How's it going guys? Park here and welcome to another video and today we're going to be looking at military surplus gear. What to avoid, what to look out for, things that are of good quality, things that are of bad quality um, and this is going to be connected with an article I'm writing for the Bushcraft Journal which you will be able to find in the link below this video. It's I believe this is going to be the October edition of the Bushcraft Journal of 2020 and um, so I decided to write this article and do this video to correspond together so they kind of supplement each other so guys get yourself down there and uh, either get yourselves a subscription or you can buy that one-off edition it's up to yourselves but one of the main reasons why I wanted to do this video was because it uh, something happened about I think it was February February or March, uh, myself and Ida and Joe, uh, we were out camping. Uh, we recorded a video, it's called A Day in the Woods with Friends. You can see it on my YouTube channel there. And my girlfriend saw it and one of the, an interesting observation she had was that it maybe seems a little inaccessible to people, particularly people who are just starting out on their journey, on the bushcraft journey or outdoors journey. When you see these people with expensive clothing or expensive equipment and all this kind of thing, and it can kind of seem yeah, can kind of seem inaccessible and, and, and I suppose a response to that was to think about how I started out. I didn't start out with expensive equipment, I gradually built up that equipment as I went along. I replaced things as they broke or as I could upgrade or as I could afford it and all this kind of thing and that's a really good way to go. You should never go out and buy all the best stuff straight off the bat and that goes for anything really. But so I was thinking about what the kind of equipment I had when I began and it was all mostly military surplus if not you know cheap alternatives to other things and as I said I gradually upgraded those things so what I wanted to do was to look at some of the equipment that's available that's really good quality um, now bear in mind some of, the, some of the equipment I'm using today I actually haven't used myself before so this is going to be an interesting uh, video to kind of test those things I bought everything that I have today with me from Military Mart in the UK uh, Dave Woods is a really good friend of mine um, and I asked him you know can you kit me out you know if my budget was 200 pounds let's say uh, whatever 250 euro what could I get for that and relatively speaking yes it's still that's still a good chunk of money but you can get yourself uh, something to sleep under, something to sleep in, uh, some clothing, some cookware, all of that stuff in that in that in and around that price range. So what I wanted to do today was take some military surplus gear, go camping with you guys, look at some of the equipment that we're using, and kind of talk a little bit about to it. And as I said, this video is going to be supplemented by an article that I've written in the Bushcraft Journal for the October 2020 edition. Um, so let's get ourselves uh, kitted out and we'll start looking at some of the equipment. Thanks. So I thought some of the first pieces that we could look at would be our uh, our pack and our clothing. Uh, two of the most, probably, arguably two of the most important and probably most expensive areas of outdoor equipment is backpacks. I mean backpacks can go anywhere in the range of 50 euro or whatever, 50, 60 pounds all the way up to four or five hundred pounds, six hundred for hunting packs if you're really wanting to get into that. Um, and the same with clothing, you know, Gore-Tex jackets, if you were to go into your local, uh, I don't know, Cotswolds or something, and uh, Cotswolds and, and, and try and find a, a Gore-Tex jacket from Berghaus or Patagonia or something like that, you're looking in and around the two, three hundred euro mark. And they are expensive. Um, and a lot of that is to do with the the fact that it's Gore-Tex and, and all that kind of thing. So I thought I'd look at some alternatives here um, and stuff that you can you can get straight off the bat from the likes of Military Mart that are not going to cost you an arm and a leg. Um, so the first few bits I'm just going to look at before I get into the pack, I'm just going to look at some of the clothing I have with me. Um, so I've got today my jumper, 
Um, this is the uh, Norwegian Army uh, Norgi jumper. Um, this is a cold weather clothing uh, jumper that uh, that is issued in the Norwegian Army. I'm not sure if it still is, but it's a really good alternative to something like, uh, you know, like a fleece or something like a Patagonia fleece. It's, a, it's really warm and um, it is a bit sweaty, but it's great. And you can sleep in that in the winter and it's going to be great. So that's the Norwegian Norgi jumper. Really love that. Um, Another shirt I have on me today, I've actually taken it off now because it's a little bit too warm, but I'll probably throw it on again later. It's the Swedish M59 shirt. It's very bushcrafty looking, which is something that I think appeals to people. I think Paul Curtley is known to, be wear, to wear them quite often, but they're, they're an over the head, so they go over the top of your head rather than button all the way up. And there's two buttons on the front collar. It's just a cotton, but it's a really nice layer to have. And it's only, I think, six pounds on Military Mart, so like a really cheap shirt, but a really good quality and it's a, it's a good solid canvas or uh, cotton. Uh, so I really like these. And then my rain jacket, my over jacket, again, it's probably way too warm to have this with me, but I've had this for about a year now. This is my uh, Austrian Army uh, Gore-Tex Parka. I can't remember the model number. Um, but it's it's Gore-Tex and it's really warm. It's got a hood that you can zip into the into this into the neck. It's kind of it's quite nice. I mean, I wear it to work and stuff. Even when I did when I lived in Dublin, um, really nice and heavy. Gore-Tex rainproof. It's just a really really great jacket. So if you're looking to look at a, an alternative to a Gore-Tex jacket, or you're looking for something that's going to keep you warm in the winter, the Austrian Gore-Tex parka. So that's my my rain layer so to speak and then my pack so I'm using the legendary LK35 the Swedish LK35 these have been issued since I believe the late 70s all the way up to the early late late 80s at least if not the early 90s and um, so there's a lot of these on the market I believe again I think Military Mart has bought up most of the stock that still exists so very smart move of that you've probably seen these MCQ uh, from MCQ Bushcraft runs one um, and a lot of people they'll modify them so they'll stitch webbing pouches on the sides or they'll put molly straps and kind of webbing and things like that so they can put side pouches and everything like that onto it it's a really really great pack it's um that, this was my first outdoor bushcraft pack this isn't my original one i actually gave my original one away to a friend of mine and um, but i decided to buy a new one mainly for the sake of this video to be honest um but it's a really cool piece of equipment just to own and have anyway this one i haven't done anything to but you can see on the inside it's pretty interesting it's got a this one is from 1981 you can see on the stamp on the inside they were made by Haglofs I'm sure everybody knows Haglofs are still around they're a very reputable outdoor company they make backpacks and jackets and everything like that so but they've been making Swedish backpacks for the for the Swedish military for years and years and this one as I said is stamped from 1981 um, but it's does so many videos online about this pack so I won't go into too much detail about it but it is a really really sturdy first pack to buy if you were to look at getting a decent pack to go outside and you want something that looks a bit bushcrafty or something like that i believe these are probably about 25 pounds 30 pounds thereabouts so definitely not going to break the bank that's you know less than a meal in a restaurant um and it's going to last it's a external frame backpack so it's got a it's got a, a stainless steel uh, frame on the back of it there which you can modulate you can add things to you can strap things to and again I would recommend checking out um, MCQ Bushcraft's videos on the LK35 because it's extremely extensive and um, so as I said I won't go into it too much but that's the pack I'm running today um, and then also for the front of it because I don't have side pouches and stuff and I wanted a little bit of extra space I've actually got this Polish uh, bread bag um, pretty good quality uh, it's you can use it as a haversack if you want but i've actually been able to strap it to the front of this using the extra long um kind of straps that come on the lk35 for strapping things like bedrolls and things like that on and um, but in here i've kept just my food for the night and um, so i got yeah just food my water canteen things like that but a pretty cool little thing to supplement your your uh your LK35 if you're looking for just a little bit of extra space and you can add that to the front and um, but that's the pack that I'm using anyway um, and the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to set up 
my uh, sleep system. So I'm going to be using a Czech army bedroll, which I'll talk about a little later, and the Polish lavu, which again I will we'll talk about a little later. Both apparently very uh, legendary pieces of kit that a lot of people love and swear by. Um, again, the Polish lavu. Uh, extensive videos online about that piece of kit so if you're interested go and check them out they do them way more justice than i could people do 45 minute videos and just that tent alone so pretty cool videos but i'm going to get it set up now I said i've never set it up before i've never used it before uh, so it should be interesting to see how this goes down and the check better all which is going to go inside uh, so let's uh, let's get ourselves set up Well, I, uh, I eventually got this fella set up. Uh, it wasn't the easiest piece of equipment that I've ever had to set up. Uh, the tension on the ground and stuff, and we're dealing with some kind of very rocky and rooty soil here, so that's not gonna help. But um, but I did get it set up. It's, it's sturdy, uh, it's heavy duty. I think it's gonna be great. Um, the thing, the, the way in which that these work is that the, the canvas itself, when it gets wet, the, the, the material actually expands. And the expansion of that, like a classic canvas tent, the expansion prevents for more water to get in. So at first when it starts raining, it will get like a slick layer on it and then it will, it will tighten up the fabric and it will stop any more rain getting in. So I don't anticipate any rain tonight, but it would be interesting if it did just to kind of give it a bit of a test. Uh, it's not something that I'd want to have to try and set up on the side of a mountain in a pinch. It did, did take a while. Um, the thing is with this is that it's actually two parts. So this would normally be carried by two soldiers uh, if it was in the Polish army. Um, each part is a is actually a um, is a poncho. So each part doubles as a poncho. There's holes here for the sleeves um, that, that can be buttoned up. And then if the soldiers want, they can either button it together as one tent or they can have it as two separate uh, kind of lean-tos. So it's an interesting way of doing things. Um, all the layers are, are all kind of double sealed and double, double buttoned and everything like that. So uh, it is definitely quirky. There's lots of kind of weird little bits left and things kind of doubled over that feel awkward and things, but hey, it's, 
it is what it is. Um, the great thing about these is that in the winter time, I've seen people use the sleeve holes to actually put a, a, a furnace in here or like a, a camp stove and out the, the chimney will go out the, the side where the pocket is. So it's a really interesting thing and it's something that I've been really interested to try myself, which I may do this winter coming. Um, but yeah, for what it is, it's uh, it seems sturdy, it seems comfortable and I'm looking forward to spending the night in here. Um, the What I'm sleeping on in the ground here, and to be honest, this is one of the pieces of kit that I brought with me that I am the most skeptical of. I haven't used one before. This is the Czech Army bedroll. Um, the reason I'm using it is it was recommended by a lot of people. The peop some some of the retro campers and stuff they swear by these. They love them, so I thought I'd give it a shot and see how it goes. Uh, it comes in three layers. The outer layer is like this polyester sleeve. It's almost like a bivy bag, but it's actually not 100% waterproof. Uh, and then you've got this kind of fleece, fleecy green blanket on the inside, um, which seems like it would be kind of warm and then this kind of cotton liner on the inside so it's a three layer system um i'm not sure if this is going to keep me warm enough and um, we're coming to the end of Sep uh, august here september beginning of september now and already the temperatures are starting to drop and it's been cold for the last few nights at home even so i'm looking forward to seeing if this is going to keep me dry and, and and warm um if i'm honest I would say the alternative to this would be the British Army cold weather sleeping bag and a Gore-Tex British Army bivy bag. Probably cost you around the same. Um, for the bulk and weight of this thing, uh, I'm I'm skeptical to see what how it delivers because it's a lot of weight and a lot of bulk to be carrying for something that feels like uh, almost like a like a summer bag, but like a heavy duty summer bag. So as I said, yeah, I think. What I started with was the British Army cold weather bag and the British Army uh, bivy bag and they probably cost you in and around the same price as this so that would be a good alternative to this but let's let's see how this plays out I won't knock it until I try it uh, and then underneath me there it's just a heavy duty um, German Army kind of uh, liner. Again, these are sold in military mart. I think they're only like five pounds or something. They'll protect your equipment from, you know, the soil, from rocks and things like that. So that's just what's under me there. Um, but yeah, so that's the sleep system. And then that's the uh, shelter system. The next thing we're going to do is get a fire going, get some cooking on. And uh, yeah, let's, let's see how we get on.
so I brought this uh, trangia, the top off a trangia, and I never thought about the fact that there's no handle on it. <laughs> so I'm adapting, improvising, and hopefully overcoming. And hopefully I don't lose my dinner. Just some scrambled eggs with some bread, rye bread in it. Look at that, pure luxury. Good morning guys, uh, I'm just after waking up, well, I'm awake about an hour, uh, it's almost 7 o'clock in the morning now. Uh, it's quite windy this morning, so I'm having to do this uh, in here to protect the microphone, but um, yeah, overall I had a good night. Um, the, the bedroll was warmer than I had expected, albeit it's still a little bit I find it a bit uncomfortable, the, the blankets tend to get kind of caught up under you and things like that. I still think the uh, the sleeping bag is a better solution to a, night's out, to a night out sleeping, but uh, if you had to deal with the bedroll then yeah, it's, it's not bad. Um, the tent held up really well, as you can see, it's, as I said, it's really windy this morning and it's holding up fine. The only thing is breeze coming in from under the bottom of it and when I'm lying on the ground um, obviously it's getting c cold on my head now obviously that's going to be the same for a tarp or anything like that but with this ground I mean, you're not really able to get the tar the tent to like really sit flush to the ground there is going to be a gap um, but yeah overall I, uh, I had a great night's sleep nobody disturbed me no animals disturbed me or anything like that um, it's as I said it's pretty windy this morning so I'm not sure if I can make it in the canoe right now. I'm gonna maybe put on some coffee, have a fire, uh, pack down and then let's, I'm gonna play it by ear and let's see if the wind dies down later on today so I can get myself out on the on the canoe, on the water. But, uh, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative. If you guys have any questions about any of the kit that I'm wearing or that I'm using, uh, please give me a shout. My Instagram is just at porkcroak. Um, and I said, as I said, this uh, video will be part of a article that I'm writing for the Bushcraft Journal uh, in October. So check that out if you guys get a chance. But until then, um, thanks for watching and I hope you guys learned something and yeah, I'll see you guys soon for another video.
Thanks.